The year 1996 brought us a film which in one swoop revived and put the final nail in the coffin of a genre. That film was Scream. Scream is an incredible masterclass in filmmaking. It takes the formula for all the already stagnant slash icons of the 80s and lays all of it out bare for you to see. Since Scream, all contemporary slashes have tried to mimic its well-crafted self-aware humour and recreate the lightning in a bottle killer, Ghostface. But for me, no one has come close to toppling the king. Flicking through Netflix lately, I'd seen the ads for a new series of slasher films, the Fear Street Trilogy. And after watching the trailers, I was very impressed. It reminds me of the American Horror Stories 80s season that came out the other year. That season was all about the aesthetic and homage. And if I'm a glutton for anything, it's nostalgia. So after its release earlier this week, we decided to check it out. And without further ado, I'm Lee, and this is my strongly opinionated review of Fear Street Part 1, 1994. Fear Street Part 1 is a 2021 American teen horror film directed by Lee Janet and based on the book series of the same name by R. L. Stein. In the small Midwest town of Shadyside, Ohio, teen massacres are the norm. Many of the Shadyside teens believe that this is the result of a witch, Sarah Fire, who placed a curse on the town before being executed for witchcraft in 1666. Following the vigil of the later slayings, Sam Frazier sees a vision of the Fire Witch and thus begins the cycle all over again as Sam, Dina and their friends begin to be stalked by the undead killers from some of Shadyside's worst massacres. The reason I opened the screen was because, well, this film is Scream. At least the first 20 minutes were. There comes a point where it's no longer becoming homage and it just feels like you're taking scenes from another film. I even started to notice a number of audio cues and tracks in the score which were all too familiar for me. But that is because the score is composed by Marco Beltrami, who's worked on films like Halloween H2O, iRobot, and surprisingly, Scream. Learning that, it did make me admire the film's creators a bit more in recreating the films that they've taken inspiration from. I don't know if I'm just being a bit too harsh here, as I guess having a serial killer in the school in the 90s, there's only so many ways this film could have started. I would show these scenes side by side for a comparison, but I just recommend watching the first 20 minutes of Scream and then just jump straight back into Fear Street. This isn't as negative as it sounds as I love Scream. And as I said, nostalgia, so I was more than happy to push on. If you still aren't aware, this film is set in the mid 90s. Despite having the year in the title, they won't let you forget it with non-stop pop culture references and 90s songs clouding every scene. This seems to be the only way some movies think that people will get to grips with the year it's set in. If you were to watch films like Clueless or American Pie, they aren't constantly name dropping 90s phrases, and the soundtracks in those films are a lot more indicative of their time. Instead, for Fear Street, we get a now that's what I call 90s soundtrack with a barrage of 90s songs like Fear of the Dark by Iron Maiden, Creep by Radiohead, Insane in the Brain by Cypress Hill, and Firestarter by The Prodigy. It has made me interested to hear what songs they'll use for the sequels. I'm not as familiar with 70s music, as I didn't exist then, but I'm as ready as ever for the 1666 entry. I don't want to be too critical of the 90s references. In fact, I'd like to see more of it in TV and film. We've had our fill of the 80s revival of shows like Stranger Things, a film like Bumblebee, and a whole host of other reboots. Instead of the 90s, you could even give us some 2000s nostalgia, as at least for me, that's where my true childhood was. Shows like Pen15 are proving that there's enough material to write about. There is an entire decade of it. Well, that's enough on the nostalgia elements, so for now, let's get to the actual meat of the film. What Fear Street matches 90s slasher alumni on is, it's teen drama. 
All the teens are classic high school teens, with hormonal angst driving a lot of their decisions. And despite having an otherworldly presence and the looming threat of death, everyone is breaking one of Scream's cardinal rules. You can't have sex. Some of the drama does outstay its welcome, but just know you're never too far away from a gruesome death. There's a good few deaths in this. Whilst not all as creative as the likes of Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street, they're just gory enough to warrant its 18 rating, especially one of note which involves a bread slicer. Slashers are one of my favourite genres. They're just chill and very fun. And this film ticks a lot of the boxes I want. There's a high body count and there's a clumsy human killer. Other than Jason, I want all of my slashers to be human and with flaws. There isn't really a big baddie like Jason or Ghostface in this, and I'm happy for it. The addition of this witch that creates serial killers is a really cool concept. Personally, I find witches are an underutilised commodity in horror. Unlike modern classics akin to Hereditary and the Witch, I'd love to see a campier side to witches. They appear in many Disney films, so they have the campiness, I just think we could gore them up a bit. I found the supernatural element of this film adds a bit more of a Halloween spook to it, which keeps it feeling fresh and not just another slasher. R.L. Stein has brought his unique flourish to the story as well. This isn't too far detached from his easily digestible spookies of Goosebumps. Fear Street has just enough mystery to pull the plot along without making you think or worry about what's going on. It just straps you in and takes you along for the ride. It's camp and it has a lot of fun with itself too. And because it doesn't take itself too seriously, I can forgive it when the logic doesn't really add up. This is no instant classic either. The slasher films nowadays are just overly self-referential and there isn't much you can do to revive the genre, besides nostalgia. We could see more of a slasher return to the 1970s and 1980s, but without rehashing old franchises, or even get some 1950s nostalgia baiting in there. Just keep this genre away from the social media era. We've tried it, and it doesn't work. Sorry, happy death day. I do appreciate the straight to streaming release, however, as this is something you can snuggle up with your booty and munch down some microwave popcorn. I just think it could have done with the Halloween release date to add to the spookies. As starting this at 9pm in July, we still got some glare from the sun. Fear Street Part 1 is a charming teen kill fest and a tribute to 90s slasher flicks, with some fresh new ideas and good spooky vibes. I'm looking forward to what else new the sequels will bring. I'd say check this film out. I'd recommend it for any horror fans or anyone who's got two hours to kill. It's a lot of fun. Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video. This film was a lot of fun to watch and the review was a lot of fun to make. I wanted to get my initial thoughts on the film rather than do a painstaking edit process. And this was a lot of fun to write. I recently put up two other reviews. So if you haven't seen those, please go check those out. But again, yeah, thanks for checking out the video, sticking through to the end. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you could just uh, put a like, subscribe, let me know what you think down below. Uh, if you like this, I've got a green screen. First time trying it out, made it months ago. Don't know if it's working. Hope it is. Awesome. Thanks for sticking around, guys. Cheers.